بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویل کنٹینیو ود آر کو اسٹریٹجی اباؤٹ انویسٹمنٹ اینڈ پورٹ فولیو مینجمنٹ اینڈ کورس کوڈ از ایم جی ٹی 531 اینڈ ٹو ڈیز لیکچرز از لیکچر نمبر 27 دی ریفرنس بک از دی سیم ایز وی ہیو بین ڈوئنگ اینڈ دیٹ از بائی کرسٹینا اباؤٹ انویسٹمنٹ انالیسز اینڈ پورٹ فولیو مینجمنٹ And uh, first of all, we will discuss the summary point that we what we did in the last lecture. In the last lecture, we did qualitative analysis, the term structure of interest rates, normal yield curve, flat yield curve, market segmentation theory, and investment in portfolio decision making process. Uh, what are the two days contents points? And uh, the contents of two days lecture comprises of the scene for investment in bond. two alternative approaches in this respect the strategies for investment in bonds passive management strategies active management strategies and, th and then we will do stratified sampling approach as far as investment in bonds is concerned the decision for investment in bonds can be made on the basis of two alternative approaches and what are these approaches first is using the comparison of yield to maturity and appropriate yield to maturity i using the comparison of current market price and increasing value of bond similar to decisions when investment is making that we have to compare in first approach that what is the yield to uh, maturity and what is the appropriate yield to uh, maturity and uh, uh, on the basis of this comparison the investor can take the guideline in order to decide about what uh, what type of investment uh, should be made in bonds and what type of investment should not be made then second approach tells that comparison of current market prices and intrinsic value of the bonds and that on the basis of the comparison of current market price that what is the market price currently prevailing in for bonds in the market and what is the actual intrinsic value of the bond similar to decisions when investing in the uh, stock that we have done this is the similar type of comparison as we have done in the and we ha we have been doing in uh, in this uh, investment of the stocks while we were deciding about the purchases of stocks to keep in the portfolio of the investor both approaches are based on the capitalization of income method of value uh, valuation and uh, uh, the objective and the uh, and the benefit of this uh, uh, these approaches is basically the capitalization of income method of valuation what is the first type of the approach The first type of approach indicate that y t m is greater than y t m star, and uh, then uh, then the scene to buy or to keep the bond as it is undervalued. We can say that the uh, bond is basically or uh, the yield is basically undervalued. Therefore, it is not possible to sell at this time. Rather, we should keep the existing uh, bonds with us, and we should keep the existing bonds that we have already purchased in our. Uh, in our setup portfolio and um, and on the other hand we can decide to purchase new because at this point we find that the actual rate of uh, rate uh, and yield is basically uh, le uh, is less than the um, uh, what the uh, what the yield to maturity should be and uh, then sec uh, then we can say that yt if the yt m is less than yt m star then what happens the scene to sell the bond as it is overvalued and we can say that what is the market value of the uh, of the uh, of the bond is or what is the yield to maturity is basically in actual situation is greater than what it should be therefore it is better to sell uh, the existing bond other than it is uh, to purchase because uh, if we purchase the bonds at this time it will be expensive for the cost, uh, for the investor rather investor should take the decision to sell the existing bond third important point is that if both these uh, uh, terms are equal if both uh, these variables are equal that is ytm is equal to ytm star so we can say that bond is valued at the same range uh, ra range as in the market and its current market price shows the intrinsic value so we can say whatever is the current market price of the uh, of the bond is the same as the intrinsic value of the bond in other words we can say that what is the appropriate yield to uh, yield to maturity is the same as the uh, as the uh, as the actual yield to maturity for the uh, particular holdings of the bond uh, by the investor therefore we can say that uh, Now, this is the appropriate time to take uh, the decision about the purchase and sale of the bonds 
as far as the second approach uh, for uh, for this comparison is considered in which we we will compare the market prices of the bonds with the uh, with the uh, intrinsic value of the bond so we can say if the uh, market price is less than the intrinsic value the seen to buy or to keep the bond as it is undervaluated we can say that uh, that the first point of the second approach is indicating that the value of the bond is undervaluated therefore it is better to keep the bonds with uh, with the investors that is uh, the uh, the bonds which are the set of the bonds which the investors have already purchased and they have kept them in their portfolio they they should continue to keep those bonds in their uh, as a part of their portfolio and uh, and secondly if uh, they want to purchase and if they have funds to purchase they should decide to purchase because this is the best time to make the purchases as far as the purchase for the assets are st uh, and the bonds is uh, particularly bonds is concerned and the second point in the, in, the, uh, in the second approach is indicating that if the market price is greater than the intrinsic value so we can say this is the best time to take the decision to sell the bond as it is overvaluated we can say as the this market is indicating the over um, estimation uh, of the value of the bond therefore it is nice to sell the bonds uh, which the investor is already having in his portfolio and has bought already bought in, in, as a part of his portfolio third important point as a part of the uh, in the, of the second approach is that if price of the of the bond is the same as the value of the intrinsic value of the bond then we can say that bond is allocated at the same range as in the market and its market price shows the intrinsic value so we can say what the market price should be is the same as the intrinsic value of the bond or in other words we can say that market price is is revealing the intrinsic value of the uh, bond therefore the, uh, we can say it is the proper time to take the decision as for as the purchase of the and sale of the bonds and trade of the bonds is concerned in the bond market and uh, with linking for the investment in the bonds we have different strategies for investment for undertaking the investment in the bonds and what are these strategies strategies for investment in bonds the first is immunization basically we have two types of important strategies with respect to investment in bonds and first type of uh, strategy is known as passive management strategy second is known as active management strategy therefore we can say basically these strategies are linked with the uh, technique and with the method and with the uh, with the uh, the tool with the help of which it, uh, we can take better decision in order to uh, make the purchases of the bonds and uh, in order to decide to keep the uh, bonds in the uh, portfolio and uh, these are uh, and these are with respect to and these strategies are with respect to uh, management of the investor or management of the firm which is undertaking the purchase of and is deciding to per, uh, invest in terms of bond and it can be the management of uh, of the corporation which is deciding to purchase the bonds as a investment so uh, these uh, two types of the important management strategies the first one is passive passive bond management strategies are based on proposition that bond pr prices are determined rationally leaving risk as the portfolio variable to control so we can say that what is the passive bond uh, management strategy is that manager uh, managing team or the manager of the of the of this, uh, uh, per, uh, this type of investment is basically rational and uh, take the decision rationally prices are determined rationally leaving the risk uh, level of risk as the portfolio variable to control so uh, we can say that prices are determined in an uh, op uh, and in an optimizing way and the uh, risk is uh, taken as a control variable in this case the main feature of the passive management uh, strategies what are the main features what are the main criteria of the passive management strategy is that they are the expression of the little volatile in the investors forecast regarding the interest rate are on the bond price so we can say the passive management strategy basically indicate that there is little volatility there is a little fluctuation have been shown in the prediction of the of the investor in the in, in the forecast of the investor with respect to the uh, price uh, rate of interest and with respect to the prices of the uh, bonds and, uh, and this is the important feature that volatility ha has been observed in the investor forecast with respect to the rate of interest and with respect to the prices of the bonds which uh, which are prevailing in the market and which are going to prevail in the near future 
In continuing with the topic, we say that have a lower expected return at risk than do the active strategies. What is the another important feature of passive uh, management uh, strategy is that the uh, according to the strategies th that the bonds have the lower expected returns and low definitely lower associated level of risk than the as compared to that in, uh, according to active strategies. And also we can say that another important feature is that the transaction cost uh, should be small. In the, in the holding of these particular types of the bond, uh, the transaction cost is small and the expected rate of return is low and associated risk is also low. The passive, uh, passive bond management strategies include the following two broad classes of strategies. We can say that there are two further uh, basic methods or basic techniques or strategies on the basis of which uh, decisions can be uh, made with respect to buying of and with respect to purchasing of the bonds uh, as far as the passive management strategy is concerned. What are these important type of strategies? First is buy and hold strategies and second is indexing uh, strategies. Uh, buy and hold strategies. As far as buy and hold strategy is concerned, this is the most passive from all passive strategies. So we can say that this is most passive type of strategy among all the passive strategies. This is strategy for an investor who is interested in non-active investing investment and trading in the market. So this definitely, as the name of the of the strategies indicating, this strategy is the uh, is the one. Uh, for any investor in, uh, where the investor is invested in the non-active uh, in type of investment and non-active type of trade in the bonds market. If we continue further, we can say that important part of this strategy is to choose the most promising board that meets the investor's requirement. That this is another uh, basic feature behind the rational decision of the investor uh, with respect to the pa passive uh, management policy and pass uh, passive management strategy. That the investor they should uh, they should uh, choose those bonds. They should try to purchase those bonds which are uh, which are basically important to meet their requirement and we, they are likely to promise, promise with their requirements. Simply because an investor is following a buy and hold strategy does not mean that initial selection is uh, unimportant. And an, uh, an investor forms the diversified portfolio of bonds and does not attempt to trade them in search for high return. So the, this, uh, the, uh, this strategy is also and this type of the decision making with respect to the uh, purchase of the uh, bonds uh, under the now, under the passive management policy and uh, passive management strategy of purchasing the bonds is that investors, uh, they, they are likely to purchase diversified type of bonds in which they, uh, they are likely to have more than one type of the bonds uh, and some of them can have, uh, can give different and, and they are likely to give different type of return and they are likely to have different type of maturity time and different yield to maturity and other characteristics. Therefore, we can say that the as far as diversification of the portfolio of the bonds is concerned, the investors they are not likely to trade uh, much in, in the in search of those uh, bonds which are likely to give higher returns and which are likely to earn higher rate of interest. Following this strategy, the investor has to make the investment decision only in, in these cases. And the bonds held by invest, investor loss, their rating, it decreases remarkably. The term to maturity ended. The bonds were recalled by issuer uh, before term to maturity. And we can say, say if we talk about and if we discuss and take the guideline from this particular uh, strategy, investor has to make investment decision only in the cases when investors lost, lost their uh, rating as far as the bonds are. Uh, concern which they are already holding and when the uh, time of maturity is ended or when we can say that the uh, the, the issuer of the of the bond they are likely to recall the bonds before the maturity time using index strategy investor forms such a bond portfolio which is identical to a well diversified bond market index and while indexing in a passive strategy assuming that uh, bonds are uh, priced fairly it is by no means a simple uh, simply strategy 
and each of the broad bond index contains thousands of individual bonds the market index are continually rebalanced as newly issued bonds are added to the index and existing bonds are dropped from the index as their maturity falls below the year information and transaction cost make it practically impossible to purchase each bond in proportion to index rather than the uh, replicating the bond index exactly index typely uses a stratified sampling approach and, and uh, if we if we find the and if we want to uh, choose as an investor the index strategy in order to purchase the bonds we can say this type of this, this discussion and this type of analysis that we have made is very much important Uh, as a guideline for the investor to pur make purchases in the uh, in bonds and uh, the what is the speciality of index bond that they use the stratified sampling approach and stat what is stratified sampling approach it is basically the approach which is based on a group of the investors and if we uh, if we analyze the uh, uh, the bonds we can say that we, uh, we can are the investors they can categorize uh, the investor they can uh, then they can categorize the uh, the groups of the bonds and they can look at the features of the bonds with respect to their returns with respect to principal uh, payments with respect to rate of interest time to maturity yield to maturity and other and the risk premium and re level of risk associated and other important characteristics uh, they um, are important to analyze as far as uh, the stratified sampling approaches uh, is uh, concerned so we can say these two are buy and hold strategies and index strategies these are important to analyze as far as the uh, uh, investor uh, investor is likely to decide his portfolio bonds um, under the passive strategy of choosing the bonds continuing with the discussion we can say that bond market is stratified into several sub categories based on maturity industry or credit quality so we can say what is the stratification as far as the, uh, the stratification in the bond market is concerned there there may be the groups and the uh, formulation of the groups which are based on the maturity uh, time of different bonds on uh, on the basis of yield to maturity time maturity of different bonds uh, with respect to the industry industry and with respect to the credit the quality Uh, proven by the uh, uh, um, by the investors for every sub category the percentage of bonds included in the market index that fall in the sub category is computed the investor then construct a bond portfolio with the similar distribution ac uh, um, across the sub categories and there are various index methodology developed to realize this passive strategy that we can uh, we can analyze and we can understand this passive strategy with the help of a number of index uh, techniques but for all index strategies the specific feature is that the return on bond for portfolio formed following this strategy is close to the average bond market return and we can say that the index uh, strategy basically indicate that the uh, that with respect to the return on the bond portfolio owned by uh, with uh, and, uh, that we can be selected with respect to this particular strategy we can say is close to the uh, bond return in the bonds market on average and then we have another uh, type of the strategy which is important with respect to the management and uh, efficiency of the management in order to take the decision by the investors to choose particular type of the bonds and to keep the particular type of the bonds in the portfolio of the investor and not to choose the other type of the bonds and what is this active bond management this active bond bond management strategy are based on the assumption that bond market is not efficient and hence the, the excess returns can be achieved by forecasting future interest rate and identifying overvaluated bonds and undervaluated bonds so we can say what is the here what is the inefficiency of the market here is that basically that the uh, uh, the uh, the investor has to analyze and the, uh, the management of the, uh, the particular firm who is investor Uh, will will be able to uh, to assess the future returns that the firm, firm can require with uh, with respect to the interest rates and can uh, identify the value of the bonds whether the bonds are overvaluated or undervaluated there are many different active bo uh, bond management or speculative strategies the main classes of active bond management strategies are Uh, that the active reaction to the forecast changes of the interest rate and we can say that active type of the of the management basically is the reaction to the forecast 
change, forecast changes of the interest rate. If there is forecast, there is prediction about the uh, about the future fluctuations in the rate of interest and the rate of the yield of the bonds. Then the, uh, there, there may be immediate response to that by the investor, and which is this, uh, which is basically of the speculative type of the uh, reaction. And uh, what are these uh, types? These types includes uh, bond swaps, immunization. And, uh, and uh, the essentially of the active reaction to uh, to the anticipated changes of the interest rate strategies. If the investor anticipates the decreasing rate of interest, he or she is attempting to prolong the maturity of the bond uh, or the duration. For example, we can say that uh, the first important type of the of uh, the feature or the um, or the solution can be. Can be that if the investor predict or is uh, is anticipating that the uh, rate of interest is likely to decrease, and uh, what he he or she will do, they will uh, prolong the maturity of the bond or the duration. We can say that they will continue to uh, to invest in the similar type of bond they have they are already uh, having, and or in other words, we can say that they will like to extend the t time period for holding of the bonds. Or another uh, can be that they can convert that particular bond into the similar type of the bond for the longer time period if they are likely to indicate and likely to observe that there is downfall in the rate of the uh, of the interest for that particular bond. For example, we can say if we are moving along this uh, portion of this uh, of the cyclical changes. Uh, with the help of which we can uh, observe the cyclical changes in the prices and yield of the bonds, and if we if the bond uh, interest rate are likely to decrease, so what the, should be the decision of the investor? They should postpone to uh, their decision to sell the. Uh, the bonds rather they should keep their bonds with themselves if the maturity is likely to end so it is possible to take the measures and to extend the bonds for the for the time period for the longer time period to hold because the long term bonds prices influenced by decrease in the rate of interest will increase more than short time period bonds and the reason is that uh, the long time period uh, 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 that the prices for the long time period bonds they will decrease um, with respect to the interest rate uh, more than the short time period prices of the bonds if the increase in interest rate is anticipated in investors uh, attempt to shorten the maturity of the bond portfolio or duration by including more bonds with the shorter maturity of the portfolio then what happens if they if they assume that rate of interest is increase will increase so what they will do they will uh, they will try to shorten the maturity of the bond portfolio or uh, the duration by including more bonds with the shorter maturity of time period and if they assume uh, we can understand the concept or, cl or clear the concept uh, uh, with the help of plotting of the diagram for example if uh, the investor of the particular types of the bond they they think that uh, that the prices of the bonds are likely to increase or the rate of interest is likely to increase and we are moving along the uh, b phase of this uh, this cycle so we can say definitely they will not sell uh, the, during this time period they will not sell during this uh, time period they will not uh, uh, because they think and uh, they expect that prices may increase further and the prices may reach some maximum level for example if this is the maximum price level and that is why they will not sell because if they sell uh, during the, uh, now uh, now at current time period and prices may increase afterward it is quite possible to so anticipation is basically very helpful uh, and anticipation about the prices of the bonds about, uh, with respect to the fluctuations in the rate of interest they are very helpful to guide the investor um, for the future investment and for the future type uh, holdings of the bond and, and uh, what they will do they will uh, keep more short term bonds and they will they will uh, shorten the uh, the maturity time period of their existing bonds because uh, if, if, if for example if they think that their time period is uh, for the maturity is much longer with respect to their uh, bond holdings and if the uh, if the rate of interest reaches to maximum level during the time period so definitely they will not be able to sell the, uh, the sell their bonds rather what they do that, that they shorten the time period time of maturity of their bonds and they include further shorten time period uh, bonds in their portfolio in order to sell them in order to take the decision to sell them you know uh, uh, for the purpose of reaping maximum return 
Therefore, we can say that they can include the more points with short maturity of in their portfolio and they, sh they can shorten the maturity time period of their existing bond, uh, uh, bond portfolio. Or this is the opposite to the, uh, the uh, uh, first type of decision they did uh, along, the, uh, along the cyclical change A. And uh, they, what they did along the cyclical change that when and they saw that their uh, rate of interest is likely to decrease. They they converted or they extended the uh, the holding of their time uh, holding time period of their bonds and uh, the maturity time period of their uh, bonds. This uh, we can see that according to active uh, reaction to the anticipated changes in the rate of interest strategy, this is very important and active type of and rational decision which the investors are likely to do and they they can decide to do with respect to the fluctuations in the rate of interest. The, uh, the essentiality of the bonds web strategy is the replacement of the bond which is in the portfolio by other bonds which was not in the portfolio for the meantime. So we can say that uh, when we, we studied different types of the, of the bonds and the nature of the, to, uh, of the bonds and we discussed that one type of bond can be converted into uh, another type of bond as uh, with respect to their time maturity and depending upon the uh, requirement of the, uh, of the current situation prevailing in the in the bonds market and uh, according to that uh, that discussion we can say that uh, and, and that the uh, what is the important feature of the of, uh, of the bonds uh, swap strategy is that uh, they can the investors they can replace the one type of bond in their portfolio by the other type of bond in their portfolio which are not uh, and which and one, one type is, uh, which are not included in their portfolio the aim of such, what is the aim of such replacement? The aim of such replacement is to increase the return on the bond portfolio based on the assumption about the tendency of changing in the rate of interest. And what is the, what is the objective of such replacement? What is basically the outcome of such type of the exchanges? And the extensions are shortened of the time period, time to maturity of the uh, of the bonds. The objective basically is to is to increase the rate of return on the bond portfolio that investors can uh, can achieve or they can earn and uh, the, the, this decision may be based on the assumption that uh, because there may be positive fluctuations in the rate of interest and negative fluctuations in the rate of uh, interest in the uh, near future time period and when they uh, they expect that the rate of interest is likely to in, uh, de decrease they will not decide to uh, to uh, sell their rate of interest uh, uh, their bonds even if their time to uh, maturity is ended and uh, if they find that rate of interest is likely to increase they definitely they will not um, they will not uh, uh, they will convert their bonds and they will not keep bonds for a longer time period uh, rather they will convert their uh, longer time period t uh, bonds into shorter term bonds and there are various types of these webs uh, what are these webs but all, but all these webs are designed to improve the investors portfolio position and uh, in simple words we can say that objective of all these types of strategies objective of all ty and these types of the of the decisions and changes in decisions in order to maximize the portfolio are basically to improve the economic situation and to uh, to improve the portfolio position portfolio economic position of the investors the bond swap can be substitution swap <coughs> first type of swap substitution swap second is interest rate anticipation swap third swap is swaps when various bond market segments are used these are important swaps which can be analyzed and which can be used as far as uh, the decision about the bond portfolio is concerned and the uh, the analysis of these swaps uh, can be helpful for the uh, for the uh, portfolio decision with respect to the purchase of the bonds uh, for the investors the essentiality of substitution swap is that one bond in the portfolio is replaced by the other bond which fully suits the changing bond by by coupon rate term to maturity credit rating and suggest the higher rate of uh, return for the investor the, what what is the substitution swap substitution swap basically indicate that one type of of, um, of the bond can be converted or can be substituted for the other type of 
the bond. Or simple words, we can say that the investment in one type of bond can be substituted for the investment in other type of the bond. And why we do this? We do this because when we find that one type of bond are, are more profitable uh, to acquire, to purchase and to keep with the investor as compared to the existing type of the bond which the investor is already keeping or have purchased as a part of his bond portfolio and uh, on what criteria the investor do this and why in other words we can say that why the investor is likely to uh, make these changes are likely to make these substitution uh, because when they uh, when he expect changes in uh, bond with respect to coupon rate and in terms of time to maturity and in terms of credit rating and when he's, he he expects that high returns for the investors are likely so they will take these types of decision the risk of substitution uh, swap can be determined by the incorrect rating of the bonds and the exchange of the unequal bonds causing the loss of the investor. We can say what is the risk? What is the risk if the substitution takes place and what is the risk associated with the substitution of the bonds is when, when the rate of the bonds is calculated in an incorrect way. That is, we can say if the correct, uh, calculation of the rate of the bonds is not correct, it is wrong. And even then if the substitution occurs uh, by mistake or by intention will be uh, risky and will create a loss to the investor. A second type of the problem which can result from the exchange, for example, if, uh, if we have the uh, same type of return and similar level of return from two types of the bonds and even then the uh, exchange takes place among the, uh, between bonds f by the investor, then it will definitely cause loss to the investor because when the, when the rates are equal and the exchange is uh, even then exchange is taking place, so this is not uh, favorable for the investor to keep these bonds as a part of his bond portfolio. Interest rate estimation uh, and anticipation swap is second type of swap which is important and which can uh, which can be basically a guideline for the investor to uh, to purchase a bond or not to purchase a bond and this is based on one type of the key feature of the of the bond what is that key feature of the bond that the inverse relationship exists between the market prices and the rate of interest that market prices and the rate of interest they are likely to observe and they are likely to indicate inverse price rate and uh, this means that when the interest rates are growing, the bond prices are decreasing and vice versa. And uh, we can say that when the interest rate are, uh, rate are growing and the bond prices are decreasing, they have negative relationship with, with each other and um, they are likely to determine the, uh, the investor's uh, portfolio in, in, in a different way. The, the investor, those who are using this strategy, which is interest rate swapping strategy, is based on a steady belief that anticipated changes of the interest rate and attempts to change frequently the structure of the bond portfolio, seeking to receive abnormal return from the changes in the bond prices. So what happens? Uh, basically, they think that those who are invested in this type of the uh, bonds to, uh, to make them as a part of their portfolio, they uh, they make these choices on the basis of the of the points that they think that if they do uh, so, when there is inverse relationship between the rate of interest and the prices of the bonds, and they and uh, and when the prices of the bonds they are at low level and they uh, they uh, they make the purchases in these bonds and definitely when the price of the bonds will increase rate of interest will fall and the reverse situation will occur in the market and what they should do they uh, should basically increase the rate of uh, uh, rate of purchasing of the bonds as a part of their portfolio and they uh, think that they will be able to earn higher rate of return and they will be able to earn more profit uh, with uh, with reference to uh, this uh, adopting this particular type of strategy this type of swap is very risky because of in exact and uns uh, uh, substantial forecast about the changes in the rate of interest if there is cross relationship between two uh, two uh, types of variable one is the rate of interest and the other is uh, market price of the bond that is if they are inversely related one is at the maximum the other one is at minimum if one is increasing the other one is decreasing and if they they expect that they investors expect that they will be likely to earn maximum out of purchase of such bonds and if they uh, if they keep these bonds and purchase these bonds in their portfolio the uh, 
uh, the decision can be be much more risky because uh, we think that uh, we cannot say anything about the increase in the prices of the bonds after uh, uh, after making their purchases that there will be upwards uh, upward trend observed by the market prices of the uh, risk and uh, because uh, uh, market prices of the bonds this is so because uh, because we we may not observe the substantial increases in the uh, bond prices and the substantial changes in the rate of interest after the uh, purchases of uh, these bonds have been made by the investor snap uh, when various bond market segments are used are based on this on the assessment of the differences of the yield for the bonds in the in the segregated bond market segments and we can say that this uh, and the another important feature is that uh, when there are uh, there are there is a significant yield difference uh, which can be observed for, uh, among different type of the bonds then it is important for the uh, for the investor to take rational decision um, for example we can say he can, uh, the, the investor they can they can leave the uh, uh, bonds with the little uh, return and as compared to the bonds which are likely to give more returns or in other words they can keep the, uh, the bonds in their portfolio which are likely to give higher returns to the investor the difference of the yield in the bond market are called yield spreads and their existence can be explained by differences between and when we can say that what what are basically the differences in the yield in the bond market and what these differences are indicate uh, indicating they are yield spreads and their existence can be explained by difference uh, between quality of bond market treating and type of issuer of the bonds government and company etc the term to maturity of the bonds uh, the term to maturity of the bonds may be uh, of 2 years it may comprise of 5 years and etc this strategy is less risky than the other swamp strategies however the return for such a portfolio is lower so what what are the basic point on the basis of which the investor they take these uh, uh, these decisions uh, with respect to yield spreads and with respect to differences of the yields so we can say basically rating of the bonds is important in this uh, aspect and uh, um, in this respect and quality of bond credit and issuers types of issuers of the bond that uh, or types of issuer of the bonds basically indicate the the, the uh, credibility of the issuing company that whether it is government or any other company or municipal company or any other private firm which is issuing the bonds then definitely determine the uh, the cred uh, credibility of the issuing company and it can uh, also determine and can be helpful to determine the portfolio decision with respect to the bonds by the investor the term to maturity of the bonds is also important that uh, and what is the, uh, the lifetime of maturity for the particular bonds and this strategy is less risky than the other swamp strategies however return for such portfolio is lower and uh, the speciality of this uh, particular type of strategy is that it is less risky and it, as well as it is giving less returns because we know that the uh, that the uh, bonds are the assets which are likely to give less returns they are li likely to be less risky as compared to the other swamp strategies uh, which uh, which are, uh, are discussed here and the immunization is the um, is the strategy of immunizing or protecting a bond portfolio that it is important for the investor to to protect their and to save their uh, bond portfolio with respect to the uh, their purchases and with respect to their diversification as far as the investment is concerned and against against uh, and uh, and, uh, and how they should protect their uh, bond portfolio it is again the interest rate, rate risk that is the fluctuations in the general rate of interest for example if there are sharp fluctuations in the rate of interest so we can say that it makes the uh, the situation or economic condition unpredictable and fluctuating and more risky therefore we can say that immunization is basically the strategy which which is helpful to the investor to save his port bond portfolio uh, with respect to the uh, interest rate risk or the fluctuations in rate of interest applying this strategy the investor attempts to keep the same duration of his uh, portfolio and if we can say uh, we can say that when this uh, particular type of the um, of uh, strategy is discussed and is taken into account we can say that the investor will like to keep his same 
portfolio with him uh, with him and we like to keep uh, safe uh, bonds in this portfolio set rather than uh, fluctuating and for the sa same time period in order to avoid the fluctuations in the rate of ret uh, ret in return and in order to avoid the uh, high rate of risk and the unpredictable and risky environment in the um, in the bond market as far as the trade is concerned the duration is the present value over weighted average of the number of years over which investors receive cash flow from the uh, uh, from the bond uh, from the bond from the investment in the bond so what is the basically duration time period it is the time period for, for which the investors they are likely to hold and keep their bonds and uh, at the end of the of the maturity time period they are likely to have some value and that will be known as the uh, uh, return or the yield that they get at the time of the maturity and they can uh, they can work to calculate the present value of those um, uh, of, of of those funds and weighted by the average number of years for which the investment ha has been made it measures the economic life or the active maturity of a bond or bond portfolio rather than simply its time to maturity we can say that when we are likely to um, measure the duration and we are likely to measure the uh, yield during the uh, duration and this yield is known as present value of the investment for a particular time period uh, for, uh, for which investment uh, is made uh, in terms of the purchasing of the bonds and uh, this is the economic life our effective maturity life of the bond and this is known as economic life because this is the time period which during which the bond is likely to to give yields to and is likely to give again to the investor and rather it is uh, simply time to maturity so we can uh, differentiate between the um, between the effective maturity and the actual uh, and simply time to maturity that difference between the two is that if effective maturity indicate that the value of the uh, bond basically can be ca calculated and what we are likely to have out of the purchases in particular type of bonds and and um, uh, over the time period however the uh, maturity time uh, simply it indicate that time is passing and we have uh, kept uh, certain bonds in our portfolio and at the end of that time period what we will get such concept called duration or um, our mockley's duration was developed by frederick mockley and we can say that this duration time period uh, as an important discussion and, and uh, as an important tool of analysis for the investor to guide and uh, for the portfolio holding is known as duration it was developed by mockley uh, mockley frederick and it was known as mockley uh, duration the main advantage of bonds to the investors what are the main advantages uh, of the bonds to investors uh, this is the point number 1 as far as the summary points of investment in bonds is concerned we can say uh, these uh, these bonds are basically good source of current income investment to bond is relatively safe from uh, uh, from large loss losses in case of default uh, bond holders receive their payments before shareholders can be compensated second and then we can say what is the major disadvantage of the holding the bonds that is the potential profit from the investment is limited so in, in other words we can say that potential profit from the investment in bonds is not unlimited second important point is that currently in the financial market there are lot of various types of the bonds and investors must understand their differences and features before deciding what bonds would be suitable for his or her portfolio investment and uh, third uh, we can see that uh, bonds can be classified by such features as form of payment coupon payment collateral type of circulation recall uh, possibility issues investment in bond decision making process then we will um, we, uh, we will summarize the, uh, the process with respect to investment in bond decision and uh, what is that process first selection of the bond type according to investor goals that is associated with the uh, expected income and the uh, risk the, then second important type of the, uh, uh, the second important tool with respect to the process of the investment in bonds is bond analysis uh, quantitative as well as qualitative third is bond valuation fourth is investment decision making and quantitative analysis of bonds is based on the financial ratios which allow assessing the financial situation debt capacity and ca credibility of the company issuer of the bonds the most important financial ratio for the bond analysis are debt to equity ratio debt to cash flow ratio debt coverage ratio cash flows debt and service ratio 
And the fifth important point is quantitative analysis of the bonds based on qualitative indicators which measures the, uh, the factors influencing the credibility of the company and most of which are subjective in their nature and duration and are not quantifiable. The main group of qualitative indicators and dimensions include first important is economic fundamental that is the current in, uh, economic climate minus overall economic and industry wide factors and second is market position, market dominance and overall firm size. The larger the firm, the stronger is its uh, credit rating. Third is management credibility and ca capability. Quality of the firm's management team, that what is the quality of the, of the management of the firm. And a bond market factors is another type of uh, dimension or indicator and which, which includes term of maturity, financial sector, bonds, quality supply and demand for credit. And uh, next is bond rating. That is, the, it shows the relationship between bond yield and uh, bond equity. Six is role of bond rating as the integrated indicator for the investor is important in the evaluation of the yield and prices of the bonds. The bond rating and the yield of the bond are inversely related. The higher the rating, the lower is the yield of the bond. Macroeconomic factors, changes of which have an influence to interest rate are increase or decrease. And level of investment, saving level, export or import, government spendings and taxes are the important macroeconomic indicators or factors which can be used to assess the macroeconomic situation. The uh, eighth, eighth is term structure of the interest rate. This is a valid uh, curve uh, displaying the relationship between spot rates of, uh, of zero coupon securities and their term to maturity. And the uh, resulting curve allows an interest rate pattern to be determined which can be used to explain the movements and to forecast interest rates and then we have three main factors influencing the yield curve and they are identified as follows the market forecast and expectations about the direction of changes in the rate of interest is the first important one and presumable liquidity uh, premium in the yield of the bond is second important one third is market inefficiency or the turn from the long term or short term cash flows to the short term or long term cash flows and then we have next point which is nine uh, as far as the summary is concerned in the bond market investment decisions are made more on the yield basis than on the price basis and uh, there are three widely used matures of the yield first is current yield second is yield to majority third is yield to call and uh, then we can say that uh, Current yield indicates the amount of the current income a bond provides relative to market price. Second is yield to maturity is the fully compounded rate of return earned by an invest investor in bond over the life of the security including in, uh, interest income and price appreciation. Third is yield to maturity is the most important and widely used me uh, measure of the bond returns and key measures in bond valuation process. And uh, Keeping the discussion, we can say yield to call uh, is, uh, measures, is, the, uh, is the measure which gives the yield on the bond if the issuing remains outstanding not to maturity but rather until its specified call date. And the tenth is that the seal for investment in bond can be made on the basis of two alternative approaches. First, using the comparison of yield to maturity and appropriate yield to maturity. And uh, second point is that using the comparison of current market prices and interesting value of the bond and this type of the comparison we have been doing um, with respect to the investment in bonds and in order to undertake the decisions for investment in the uh, stocks and the other assets and both approaches are based on the capitalization of income method of valuation continuing with uh, the is a uh, summary points we can say we have another 11th point using the yield to maturity approach and if yield to maturity is higher than appropriate yield to maturity, bond is undervaluated and investor decision should be uh, to buy or to keep a uh, bond in the uh, portfolio. And uh, uh, the, if yield to maturity is lower than appropriate yield to, uh, yield to maturity, bond is overvaluated and uh, investor decision should not be to buy or to sell the bond. Uh, if yield to maturity is lower than appropriate yield to maturity bond is valuated uh, at the same range 
as in the market and its current market price shows the intrinsic value so we can say that market price of the bond is the same as the intrinsic worth of the uh, bond then we have next point 12th summary point which indicate the two types of strategies investing in bonds are here uh, first one is a passive management strategy and second is active management strategy Passive management bond strategy are based on the proportion that bond prices are determined rationally and leaving the risk as the uh, portfolio variable to control. The active management uh, strategies are based on the assumption that the bond market is not efficient and hence the excess returns can be achieved by forecasting future interest rate and identifying overvalued bond and undervalued bonds. 13 points is that passive bond management strategy include two broad classes of strategies first important class is buy and hold and second is indexing what is buy and hold buy and hold is strategy for an investor in in who is interested in non active investing and trading in the market and an important part of the strategy is to choose and buy most promising bonds that meet, meet the investor's requirement that we can say that investors should choose the bonds according to his re uh, requirement of the portfolio and then we have another type of strategy which is known as index strategy the investors forms uh, such a bond portfolio which is identical to well, well diversified uh, bond market index and 14th is that uh, the active reaction to the anticipated changes of the interest rate is based upon that we can say that the as far as the active management strategy is concerned uh, the diversified portfolio is chosen as well as uh, the choice of the and the scene of the investor is based on the uh, future uh, fluctuations and uh, anticipated fluctuations in the rate of interest in the near future uh, then the, the investor decision making in his or her portfolio as reaction to anticipated changes in the rate of interest that we can say that investor will definitely uh, make the uh, his decision about the purchase of the bonds and purchase of different types of the bonds in his portfolio with respect to the fluctuations prevailing in the rate of interest. Another point is the essentiality of the bond swap strategy is the replacement of the bond which is uh, which is in the portfolio by other bond which was not in the portfolio for the meantime. The aim of such replacement based on the assumptions about the tendency of changes in the rate of interest to increase the return on the bond portfolio. The, uh, the, the, and we can have different bond uh, swaps in this respect. And what, what are these swaps? Uh, the bond swaps include the substitution swap according to which we substitute one type of bond for the other type of bond on the basis of the uh, of the expected rate of return and then second is interest rate anticipation swap that uh, what we are anticipating or what the investor is anticipating as far as the interest rate is concerned and then we have swaps when various bond market segments are used the 16th point is that immunization is the strategy of immunizing or protecting a bond portfolio against the interest rate risk that is when uh, the fluctuations uh, and are observed in the uh, in the uh, interest rate in general we can say that this policy can be used in order to prevent the uh, and in order to uh, make the uh, portfolio as a safe investment applying the strategy the investor attempt to keep the same duration uh, in his portfolio we have another important point which is 17th point which is about the duration or time to maturity of the particular type of bonds um, with respect to their purchase in the portfolio said the duration is the present value weighted average of the number of years over which investors receive cash flows from the bonds and it measures the economic life or the effective maturity of a bond rather than the simply time to maturity we can say that, uh, that when the duration of the of any uh, any bond is concerned it is basically the time to maturity of the bond and we can calculate the present value that uh, the bond can yield after the uh, maturity time period we can say when we calculate the present value the objective is to undertake the economic analysis and this economic analysis uh, with the help of this economic analysis and economic life of the of the bond we can uh, we can have effective 
uh, analysis of the bone and uh, such a, such a type of analysis uh, is known as the effective maturity of the bond and rather than having the time to maturity and we can say that simply time to uh, maturity uh, the bond is pa passing we have the economic time to maturity and the effective time to maturity with the help of which we calculate the present value of the bond then we have the key points and as far as the key points are concerned we can say we have active management strategies asset uh, back st uh, uh, securities and uh, bond rating uh, bond swaps buy and hold strategy callable uh, bonds cash flows and uh, uh, debt uh, service ratio convertible bonds corporate and uh, bonds coupon bonds current yield debenture uh, and debt to equity debt to cash flow ratio debt coverage ratio deferred interest bond duration are uh, macle bonds and full coupon bonds, floating rate bonds, external and internal bonds, euro bonds, uh, general obligation bonds, gilt edged bonds, guaranteed bonds, immunization, income bonds, industrial bonds, indexing bonds, indexed and interchangeable bonds, internal in, uh, bonds and increasing value of the bonds, juniors and senior bonds, junk bonds, liquidity, preference theory, market expectation theory, market segmentation theory, mortgage bonds, municipal bonds, non callable bonds. And, uh, then in non-interesting bearing bonds, optional payment bonds, passive management strategies, participation uh, bonds, public utility bonds, regular serial bonds, revenue bonds, quantitative bonds and qualitative and quantitative indicators, secure and senior bonds, sinking bonds, atom structure of interest rate, uh, treasury uh, bodies and bonds, unsecured bonds, voting bonds, yield to call, yield to maturity and yield to coupons and uh, this was two days lecture and, and um, at the end I will give the summary of the two days lecture that what we have done over here in the lecture number 27 as far as the important points of today contents are concerned we can say that we discuss the decision for the investment in bonds and two alternative approaches strategies for investment passive management active management and stratified sampling and as far as the now, as the two important uh, alternative approaches are concerned, we have the yield to maturity, and uh, uh, we have the current, uh, we have the comparison of the current market prices and increasing value of the prices. We have the in approaches, we have the comparison of yield to maturity, appro which is appropriate and uh, and which is the actual yield to maturity, and we discuss different uh, points that uh, when we should uh, take the decision to buy or to keep the bonds. And um, and uh, and we should take the decision to buy and keep when it is undervaluated, and when the, uh, when it is overvaluated situation, we should decide to sell our existing uh, holdings of the bonds. And when actual uh, yield to maturity is the same as the appropriate yield to maturity, this is an important time, and um, for the trade. And we uh, we think that the actual and increasing value of the bonds and market prices of the bonds they are the same. And uh, similarly, second approach compare the interesting value and the market prices. And when we can say when the economic situation is undervaluated, we should make the purchases, and we should make the sales when the uh, economic uh, when the value is overvaluated. And third is the equilibrium where uh, prices are the same as the interesting value. Then we have two strategies for immunizing in the bonds. We have two important strategies for it. one is passive management strategies and second is active management strategies. Both strategies they are with respect to the management of the <coughs> uh, um, uh, with respect to the management of the um, of the team and management of the firm or corporation which are likely to uh, invest in the port, uh, bond portfolio. And we can say that as far as the passive management is concerned, little volatility in the investor forecast with respect to the bond prices and the interest rate can be observed. And the, uh, the, uh, with respect to passive management strategies, the bonds they have lower expected return and risk. They have small transaction cost. And and these uh, these passive bond strategies they include two, uh, two another important strategies. One is buy and hold strategies. Other is index strategies. And buy and hold is important of all uh, passive strategies, and this is uh, with respect to that investors interested in non-active and trading in the market. 
Then we have buy, a buy and hold strategy. It does not mean that, that initial selection is unimportant. Investors basically forms the diversified type of uh, the bonds and does not attempt to trade them in, uh, in uh, such for higher returns. Then we have another, another type of the strategy which is known as index strategy, where the investors form a bond portfolio which is identical to well a well diversified bond market index. Then, and we can also use the stratified sampling approach in order to uh, analyze the market situation with respect to this strategy. And then we have another type of strategy which is known as active bond uh, management strategy. These are based on the assumption that market is not efficient and uh, there are different active bond management strategies as spec uh, speculative strategies. The main classes of bond management include bond swaps, immunization, and uh, the essentiality of the active reaction to anticipated changes of rate of interest is that if the investor anticipates a decreasing interest rate, he is attempting to prolong the maturity of the bond and duration or bond portfolio. And if we express that long term bond prices are influenced by decreasing the rate of interest, he will, uh, he will increase more than short term bond prices. And if increase in the interest rate is anticipated, investor attempt to shorten the maturity of the bond portfolio. And bond swaps uh, can are of different types. We have substitution swap, interest rate swaps, and swaps when various bond markets are segmented. And uh, continuing with the discussion, we can uh, say that there are also differences of the yield, and uh, which lead to yield spread, uh, yield uh, spread, and which are known as yield spreads. And uh, th these include b basic difference among the uh, among the yields of different bonds on the basis of quality of bonds, credit and by types of issu uh, issuing companies and terms to maturity of the bonds. These are the uh, points on the basis of which differences can be created among different types of the bonds. And uh, immunization is the strategy which is basically the bond portfolio against the interest rate risk that is to avoid the investors from the sharp fluctuations in the uh, rate of interest. And then it's important concept which is about the duration and for example if we keep the uh, bond for a particular um, time period we can calculate the present value weighted by the number of the years over the, the time period for which we obtain the cash flows and we can say that uh, when we calculate the cash flows and the present value this is basically the analysis for the economic life or effective maturity of bond and when we just look at the duration we can say that uh, and that it is the time to maturity simply and this was calculated by Ma uh, Macle and is known as Macle uh, duration and then we have the summary points of uh, uh, the whole chapter and that we have done this was the end of the two days lecture and in the light of the discussion and the lecture I think you will be able to understand what we have done over here and uh, take care of your studies take care of yourself and up, up till next lecture Allah Hafiz Assalamu Alaikum